Hey everybody, I'm really excited to be back with the latest episode of Tea with Greg C. So I've got a lot of really exciting news about New York City that I wanted to share with you. Let's first start with what's happened in the last week. We have seen some really big numbers on New York City traffic, foot traffic. So New York City is coming back. I recognize it's off of very low levels, but here's what we've seen. We've seen the castle data. That's basically the card readers in all of the buildings. Uh, they're showing a significant uptick in occupancy of buildings. We were less than 20% a week and a half ago. Now we're at 28%. Uh, we've also seen in the headlines in the last two days that the Metro uh, MTA, the subways, buses, we're now at the highest foot traffic and highest sort of swipes that we've seen since the beginning of the pandemic. So if there are any questions about, is New York City coming back? The answer is absolutely yes. We've seen a big uptick in the last week, week and a half. Yes, I understand we have a long way to go, but no doubt we're seeing some really good, positive green shoots. I'll call them positive activity. The second big piece of information if you're in the real estate industry or really New York City in general because real estate is such a driver of, uh, of the economy in New York. We've seen office leasing numbers at, uh, at highs for the year. We saw north of 2 million square feet of leases signed in, uh, in August. I, I understand that we still have a long way to go considering two years ago we were at 40 million square feet of leases signed. but. Uh, on a two to two and a half million square feet, that's at about 27, 28 million square feet. We're moving in the right direction. Again, another big piece of news, commitment from, I'll call it big tech to New York City, uh, Google. They just made this big announcement this week of, uh, of buying the, uh, the, the St. Uh, the St. John's Terminal, spending $2 billion. They're clearly building a big campus uh, downtown and it just shows the commitment to New York City. So three big things that I'd say are positives for New York in the last seven days. And now, uh, like I do in every episode of Tea with Greg C, I go back to a question that I've received in the last week to be able to provide some answers. So a question that I frequently get, get asked is, you know, what does it cost to move? I understand the cost of, uh, of moving into a new space, uh, building it out and things like that, but what, what are the other extras that I need to be thinking about? So. I just want to break that down for you real quick. Furniture. The reality is it costs a lot of money to move your furniture from the space that you have currently. So, uh, and it also costs money to move it because of all of the elevator charges. So what's, what does new furniture cost? New furniture costs anywhere between 15 to $50 a square foot. Yes, I recognize it could be higher than that, but let's just say as a guide 15 to, to $50 a square foot, if you want to, if you want to have to have a number to apply towards your budgeting, call it twenty-five dollars a square foot for new furniture. Then you've got the cabling. Uh, it's important to know that when you move into new space, there's no wiring. Uh, your your response, they they bring the wire essentially to your door, and then you're responsible for everything inside your door. So low voltage cabling is two dollars and fifty cents per square foot. Now. There's the building out of the space. How do you configure it? The architect, let's just say it's a raw space. Now, right now, you're not seeing a lot of raw space being built. Really what, what tenants want is they want, they want built out, uh, we call it um, plug and play kind of space. But if someone were to build out their own space, architect and engineer, five to $6 per square foot. And then you've got project management. So even if a landlord is building out a space for you and you're getting TI dollars. Uh, you don't necessarily want the landlord to oversee th their own work, right? There's a conflict of interest there. There's the opportunity for, I'll call it corners to be cut. Something as simple as uh, the sound, the sound masking that's going to be used in between the walls. Is it going to go all the way slab to slab or is it going to go three quarters of the way? Well, someone like a project manager can certainly help you to be able to oversee the landlord's work. So a project manager is gonna cost, call it $4 a square foot, and then moving. So yes, I understand the furniture in many instances is gonna, is gonna stay, but in, many, in some instances, you got files, you got IT, you got computers. So what, what's, what's a good number to budget for? One to $3 per square foot. So you add that all up, 
you're at about 30, 35, 37, 38 dollars a square foot for for your budgeting purposes. I recognize that that's a, that's a, a wide target based upon what your requirement is, but that's just a guide for you. And then finally, I was on a call with about 20 landlords in New York City two days ago. Some really interesting comments came out of that about uh, what tenants want right now. And I just really want to, to, to share with you the things that, that landlords are seeing as far as trends uh, that might be able to help guide you. So, tenants want operable windows. They want full floors to be able to maintain their space uh, more so than and control it. They want outdoor space. They want creative. They want something special, collaborative space to incentivize their employees to come back into the office. They want uh, s full floors and they want, they're really asking for a flight to quality. They're taking the opportunity with the difference in pricing and the market that's come lower to be able to say, I want to upgrade my space. I want to move to a to either higher in a building or I want to move to a better quality building. So those are just some general themes that we're seeing in the market. And that, that's the good news from New York City. We'll see you next Thursday for Tea with Greg C. Until then, have a great week.